Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We are on a rather windswept Eastbourne Beach down here in Sussex at a place, well it's an old stamping ground of mine from 30 odd years ago and I used to go cod fishing called Langney Point. It looks totally different, you know, to when I remember 30 years ago. I was fishing just down there and a nice big cod, £9.5 I think it was in one of the cod books I did. I remember that, I used to fish till 3 in the morning and then sleep in the car. Uh, no more, no more. <laughs> but we are down here with... We're with Tony, Tony Keery to Tony's Tackle. We've done a few episodes with Tony. We like doing, we like doing the episodes with Tony, don't we? He's a nice laid-back guy. Yeah. He gets to the point. He gives you guys some really good tips. When we're looking really for a, an outside, outside chance of a sole, really, isn't it? Yeah, to get some flats down here. I've never caught a sole before, so for me that'd be something. I'd be, I don't mind. I don't care about size. I'd be I, quite happy. To I'd say it. I've caught only about two tiny weeny little sole before, and that's in about 40 or 50 years fishing. But they're telling me that they're in here in numbers, good chance of seeing them. And I know you're gonna get a film of one because literally we were running late with the traffic. Tony's been down there, bottom of the tide, and he's got one in a bucket. And I think he's got something else. He's gonna put it back, he's gonna return it. But just so you guys can see what a sole looks like, let's get down there on gagging to get bait in the water. This part of Eastbourne is a really old stamping ground of mine. I used to come down there on the winter nights, usually November, December, summer, January, fishing right below this Martello Tower, absolutely below it. But now, I mean, it was all beach end, which is the groins, and now they put these sea defences in there with these huge, great big boulders. And uh, we went down there to meet the guys, and they were already out there fishing. Tough weather conditions. And look at the new sign in for Manchester United. This guy can play with two footballs at the same time. That's a player we need to have. And in the background years ago, 30, 35 years ago, there were no flats. It was just flat open ground there. And now they built an entire marina there, blocks of flats, apartments, I'm guessing holiday homes. So totally different in the last 30 years. Out to sea is the same except for all the rocks are where I used to be casting for cod in the winter and whiting. But it was called Langley Point. It's a famous place. And that's where we went, went down to meet the lads see what they were up to and hopefully try and get you guys a few tips on fishing for sole and this is what the area was famous for at this time of year is sole coming in there close anybody can catch him you don't need to be a long caster so the man we needed to talk to was none other than our good old tony carriage from tony's tackle Hi there, Tony. Hey, Graham. How you doing? Good man, good man, right? man, good man, good man. Nice yeah. See ya. Caught in again. traffic. Caught in traffic again. I know. It's lovely. I love um, that M25. Now, you, and, you've been out before us. Yeah, me and Matt came down a bit earlier. Yeah. Because uh, we knew he was getting caught in traffic, so made sure we tried to get some fish. But the weed was horrendous in the first hour. You couldn't fish it. Really? It's, it's after that hurricane, you know, that tail in that hurricane, it's been horrendous down here. The lads fished last night in a, in a match, and a lot of people didn't catch nothing. A couple of people didn't catch night, but the fish that were caught were all quality. There was a four pound six bass, oh, nice. three yeah, pound yeah, eight yeah. and a half. Yeah. Dan had one who's with us today. Yeah. Dan had three altogether. We had seven pound of fish in three hours. Of course, the old rough sea brings a bass in. So, yeah, um, I mean, I had a terrible night. I blanked. I mean, there's only two blanks in the old match, and just had a bad time last night. It was just unfishable in certain Great places. Yeah. I went to the wrong end, you know. So, but anyway, you this, off morning, this morning. So, obviously, yeah, what we've had this morning. morning very small, this bass. Gonna put it back, but just kept it alive just for the camera. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very there, small, undersized, and it's going back. Just we just kept it alive for an hour to show you, and it's in good condition as you can it's see. It's all fresh. 
all fresh. He's going to go back to see in a second. I'll put him back for you, Harry. Yeah, you can do, Graham. Are you no showing the guys where I sit? An eel down there? I've got an eel. Small, very small. This, Matt's just had a couple of eels. I'll probably have a job getting hold of this boy. <laughs> He's in there somewhere. Got him, Ink. This Too is slippery. Tony, Tony playing, I can't yeah, catch the eel. I wish I hadn't put it in the bucket. There he is. He's only small. Slippery as anything. Let's see if I can get his head out. Look. Am I right in this is what they call silvers? These are silver eels, yeah. There. I think a lot of these come out the river, you know, because um, when it's... The other week we had a match and it was raining. Yeah. And basically, um, again, I'll put this back. It's nice and lively. Yeah. Um, it was raining the other week and uh, loads of sort of rainwater come out of pipes and people said it didn't fish because it was there's too much rain in the, in, in the you know rainwater in the sea yeah and all of a sudden i mean these usually come in may you know oh, really? all of a sudden loads of eels are turning up and i think they're coming out of the pipes getting flushed out oh, I they're see. hungry yes so they're very small you know we get big eels in may you get what, these have been very big small ones? you know but they've been catching ones like nearly about from that tail to the end, you know, about yeah. sort of four inches long. Still a fish to catch, guys coming on yeah, the beach. Yeah, it's a fish, and it's of course the, the good thing about the eel, it's no good to anyone, so it can go back alive, yeah. which is nice. As we'll put it back in a second. I'll put that one back for you. Do you want to put it back? You sure? Oh, I'm what? getting you out of here, aren't I? <laughs> I, feel like I, feel like I feel like I've had a good day already. <laughs> I haven't even tackled up. And then um, what we got here, Mike, is what we yeah. come for, the sold. The sole, yeah, and, uh, I, I, don't, I was just saying, Dad, I've never big, caught one. But we've so. managed to scrape a couple out, me and Matt, but they are not big. But, you know, we get hopefully in a minute we'll get some big ones. We've had some lovely soles down here, up to two pound plus, you know what I mean? Yeah. They've got a weird mouth to them, Tony, as well. Yeah, very they've got a very small, small mouth. You, what you've got to do, you've got to use a a, like a size four hook or a six. Yeah. And, and so many people come down here at Langley Point and they lose big soles, you know, you're talking about pound and a half soles. And because their mouth's so small, you use a two hook or a one and you won't get them. You use a nice little size six, use a strong hook. Yeah. So many people miss fish for using big hooks, you know. Um, Dan last night, he caught three big bass, all, all using number fours, yeah. very small hooks, you know. Quality, but these but, these little babies look. You can see the mouth; it's very small. Oh, just in there, tiny, like a little beetle. They just don't want to. They just don't want to play ball with a big hook. But not saying you won't catch them. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But you'll probably miss three, catch one. Yeah, Earlier yeah. on, I was fishing with twos, Dan, and uh, I had a nice bite there. You see, Matt reeled in a sole. Dan got two flounders. Definitely a flatfish. Me using too big a hook. Yeah. Didn't get a fish. Might have been a pound and a half sole. Yeah, could so be a you miss a nice yeah. fish by being sometimes complacent and stupid. And there's no excuse during the day, you can use a nice little look. Maybe night time you've got to step up a bit so you can get a nice big bass. Are they really a night feeder, the sole? Would you say they they're a night feeder? They feed more at night. They feed on the long tides. At what you call a long tide? It's a spring tide. eight today, which is one of the biggest tides of the year. That's a spring tide. Yeah, now fish on the spring tide. That you go down here a long tide, you'll catch fish. Yeah. You come down in the short tides, you'll struggle and they primarily you'll get a lot more at night. If you come down here at night, you get a good eight or nine of these. Did it make any, any difference between, because it's flowing a bit today anyway, um, if it was uh, clear water or, you know, if it was coloured water, that stirred up nicely. Does that make any difference in clarity? I think it, it likes to be stirred up, but I think today it's too stirred up. You know, we've, as I say, we've had the back end of this Hurricane Bertha thing or whatever it was called. Yeah. And basically it's been horrendous down here, but it's calming down and like I say, we was going to do this tomorrow. I think exactly, tomorrow yeah. would have been a far better day to do it. Yeah. But it's still nice. The sun's out now. We've gone through all the rain while you've been driving down here. Exactly. Got drowned it. We were fine in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now we're on to hopefully catching some fish. Well, let's get a still of you with those two, Tony, holding those two. Okay, that's fine. you in the last video um, it's a beautiful rod but I also the other end of the scale these are 449 pounds on the other end of the scale you've got this one which is called the hazard which I mentioned from Colmick and this one is retails about 99 pounds 
can get it a little bit cheaper in some places. It's a terrific little rod and it's quite nice for sole fishing because uh, it's easy, you know, it, it casts well, it's a little bit shorter. Thankfully, all this tackle being used did have an effect on the fish and they gradually started to show themselves. Been here for five minutes of the day, first cast, first sale. Nice one there. And what did he take that one? A little bit of lug on a free hooker. It wasn't out for five minutes was it? Not out for five minutes. And we're in. Good show. <laughs> there we go. With a couple of soul actually on the camera, we just had to fish and persevere with the conditions at the time. And let me tell you, it was windy. It was rough. People ask us why we use heavy leads and big rods. That's because the sea conditions dictate how you can fish and what you're gonna cast out. You don't need to make it overcomplicated when you're going fishing for soul. You can use regular small hooks, and in this case going to be using some of Tony's black lugworm. Now these are rolled in newspaper to keep them dry, you just throw them down on the rocks and you can actually see them tighten up, see them all tighten up, throw them down once or twice and then you'll find as they firm, as they stiffen up, you can thread them up your hook shank, over the point, right up and over the eye. This is quite important really if you don't want to you know, clip your baits down with soft baits, just thread the, that worm over the point around the bend you can support it with your fingers as you're threading that up there you can see just there and then the most important part is pop that body carefully over the eye and that keeps a nice big bait ready for cod bass anything that's coming along and i didn't even bother clipping them out i don't bother with multipliers and pendulum casts anymore i just use big fixed balls it's so easy get the bait in the water don't spend your time untangling multiplier reels. They're great if you experience for beginners. Go with a regular fixed spool reel. Well guys, here's something unusual. We were filming up there and I didn't see any bites. And this shows you why you should be watching your rods. Because I've just brought this little light rod in. It's only a small spinning reel here. I chucked it really, really close in. So I'm starting to bait up and I thought, why is that tangled up like that? See all those hooks twisted up on the snood? That's a telltale sign of a fish that's hooked itself and I've lost it through not watching the rod top. It's all twisted up, but which species would you think would twist that, twist it and twist it? Look, absolutely twist it up. That's right, an eel. And do you know how I know it's an eel? Look at this disgusting slime, rubbery slime all the way up the line. So, I haven't got anything yet. I'm getting closer. I wish I'd watched the rod top. I've definitely lost an eel and he spun up, twisted all that hook length up. So watch, end up here, look, all the way up here to that bait. Absolutely cacked in it. Yucky, yucky slime. My fault, next time I shall spend a bit more time watching the rut. Okay, Mike, finally got a decent one. It's not massive, it's a bit better. Um, I was talking to your dad, and I've scaled down to size four hooks now because I was saying about how they've got small mouths in soles. And uh, a lighter line here, I'm, I'm using 15 pound amnesia, which is a little bit lighter. You can go down to fluorocarbon when things get really tough, but the sea's quite coloured, and I'm surprised we're not catching more. But we've had a few now, so at least it's mission accomplished, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, they're nice fish. Yeah, your dad see the bite. I didn't see it, but he, he got a bit excited and told me to strike it, I think. But what it is with these, the, the fours do the job. So if you leave it, you will 90% of the time catch the fish. The tide will do the work. So it's just starting to pick up on the ebb now. So hopefully we'll get a few more. We might get a nice big one. Bit of luck. There's some beautiful ones down here, up to about two pounds. But you know, always on the day. They're a bit camera shy, you know what they? Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's not too bad anyway. On lugworm, 
size four root, nice uh, finesse rig, no, no bother with uh, bait clips or anything like that, just uh, a flapping rig what we call it, tends to catch better, you haven't got to cast miles for these babies so you know it's not too bad, it's not as if you've got a sort of like reach France to catch them, they've invariably in the gully there probably 60 yards out. You can either put your rods vertically or you can put them parallel, literally sideways to the beach, so that if you're fishing for small fish, you get to see those tiny little bites a little bit better without straining your neck. Lots of small fish can be caught off that Eastbourne beach. It's not just Langley Point. Langley Point just happened to be the area we were fishing on that day and it was a rough day churning the surf up there. You'd think it would be stirring the fish up and one of the best fish to buy then when it's rough is the bass. But you can see by that yacht exactly how rough it was out there. Place, flounder, um, sole, eel, eel bass. 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 So we've had a mixed bag, but not massive fish today. We've had a nice time. So Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. All on luck work. There's just something of the unexpected when you get to go sea fishing. I do all types of fishing, and here's Mike Luck with a bass. Straight out of the blue, rough conditions. Mike's done most of the filming. And as you can see, he even got a chance just to wind a nice schooly bass in. And of course, that size, we put them back in the water. Well, boys, I just saved the blank there. I just saved the blank. It's howling here. You actually watch a yacht go out and have to turn back. And do you know what this is? You'll love this. <laughs> this is the place, place to be. There you go, nice place. So we've seen place, sole, bass, eels down here at East Ball. Then we've got a wave then. Not a big fish, obviously not a big fish, but a fish. I'm pleased with that one. He's going back. Not the world's biggest fish, but I tell you what, a bit of sport. It's, it's as rough as rough as a bear's thingy. But there you go, and there's a lot of guys toughing out here, and we're all catching fish. Keep watching a totally awesome fishing show for more beach fishing tips. Get this guy back, and I hope I don't get a booty doing it. <laughs> I'm so pleased folks that I came to fish with Tony and I'm so pleased I returned that fish.